Have you heard the latest claims about the World Economic Forum wanting to put microchips in everyone? This topic has been buzzing around social media and has many people worried and confused. The idea of being tracked and controlled by a chip sounds like something from a sci-fi movie, but is it really happening? So, let's dive into this video today to find out what's true and what's just a rumor. Many of us have numbers that stand out to us, like a favorite athlete's number or a birth date. However, one number in the Book of Revelation has intrigued people for years, the Mark of the Beast. This concept is a significant part of biblical prophecy and has been a subject of much speculation and interpretation. A recent update from the World Economic Forum discussed a topic called the race for advanced AI chips. They noted that the demand for these advanced chips, essential for powering AI, is skyrocketing. As a result, many leading technology companies are unveiling new AI chip models. This month alone, Intel, Meta, and Google announced their latest AI chips, while NVIDIA showcased its new AI chip at its annual developer conference in March, promising super-fast processing speeds. NVIDIA has now become the third-largest public company in the world by market capitalization. Chips are the building blocks of a new type of economy. An expert in AI in the enterprise said, no matter what industry you're in, from consumer goods to healthcare and shipping, business processes are becoming AI-enabled. Many countries, including the U.S., EU nations, and India, are heavily investing in new semiconductor facilities to produce the wafers that form the base for these advanced chips. This development has led some to believe that the prophecy in the Book of Revelation about the mark of the beast is coming true. ...who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped its image. Revelation 13:16. 17 outlines the economic strategy of the beast and its associate. He compels all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. This mark signifies allegiance to the beast, and no one can buy or sell except those who have the mark, which is either the name of the beast or the number of its name. This passage suggests a future where participating in the economy will require bearing this mark. President Trump was just convicted in a rigged witch hunt trial. Now we're asking you to tell the mark of the beast, enabling them to buy and sell. Recent technological advancements, especially in AI and semiconductor technology, have led some to draw parallels between modern developments and the prophecy of the mark of the beast. The ability to implant or attach a mark that enables economic participation is no longer a far-fetched idea. Various technologies could potentially be used to create such a mark, and these possibilities are constantly being explored and tested. the mark cannot exist before this time. Current marks are merely a forewarning, not the actual mark of the beast. An intriguing modern possibility is the RFID chip, radio frequency identification. These chips use electromagnetic fields to identify and track objects and have been used in many applications, including tracking items and making contactless payments. Some companies have even started using RFID chips in humans, allowing employees to open doors, pay for food, and access equipment with a simple hand wave. While RFID technology is gaining popularity, it also raises concerns. For those familiar with the Bible, RFID chips can resemble the mark of the beast, especially since many are implanted in the right hand. Revelation 13, 16, 17 says, He causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. No one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. This prophecy indicates that the mark will be necessary for economic participation under the rule of the beast. A TikTok video shared on Facebook shows a man discussing an article claiming that the World Economic Forum, WEF, has announced a new initiative requiring all citizens to be implanted with a central bank digital currency, CBDC microchip, to fully participate in society, including buying essentials like food and water. 
Shalom. I want to give all praises and in glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned the truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, El Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is what the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But his one and only true name is Yahabashai in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um pretty much what's been going on, especially here in America, they've been invested in, you know, these um these AI semiconductors, all right, which is pretty much going to be used to build this cashless digital society. All right. You're gonna have smart cities, everything is gonna be absolutely digital. You know, the fiat currency that we use, the paper money, eventually they're going to do away with that. They're going to do away with this old banking system, commercial banks, you know, depositing checks and stuff of that nature. And what we're going to witness is a transition from physically conducting business, all right, physically buying and selling to now everything is going to be absolutely digital. And this is the point of the central bank digital currency all right the fact that it is programmable money you know so what do you do with something that's programmable you got to put it on a device and then they plan to make it mandatory now this is why all countries they was going through a cbdc test pilot program testing out the mechanics of the central bank digital currency seeing how people would react to this new idea so you need to understand that regardless of everything that's going on concerning de-dollarization, you know, um, the formation of the BRICS nations. Yes, all of that um, pays a factor, you know, it plays a factor as far as um, causing an economic collapse, which is going to turn into a global economic collapse in order to usher in a new system. But remember, all countries have to be on board with this. So, you know, I'm not really concerned about, um, you know, the America saying that they're not going to allow a CBDC to be a legal tender, meaning you can use it in the store. All right. I'm not concerned about that because they already went through a CBDC test pilot phase for three weeks in 2022, which means that they plan to implement this. All right. So what you need to understand is the CBDC is a one world currency and that gives the central bankers full control over the money supply. All right. So this is how they're going to bring about the hour of temptation by replacing this old banking system and implementing a new one that involves the CBDC and then ultimately putting that programmable money on a device, which is the mark of the beast, the RFID chip implant, and then making it mandatory. All right, they could easily do this. And according to the Bible, this is how they plan to do it. When you read Revelation 13 and 17, I'll read it real quick. It says, and then no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. So what does that let you know? That lets you know that the currency is gonna be on the mark. You're not gonna be able to buy and sell because the currency is digital now. And it's going to be put on the mark and it's going to be made mandatory. You're not going to have any other options or any other forms to buy and sell with. Only the mark. And that's what the hour of temptation is all about. The great time of testing. When they make the RFID chip implant all right, mandatory throughout all countries. Why? Because this programmable central bank digital currency is going to be on this mark which is the rfid chip implant all right so it's very easy it's very simple to understand because you have individuals talking about oh but what if they force you no they're not going to force you to do anything they're going to pressure you into taking the chip but you're going to have to make the choice will you consent and say yes i'll bow down to your new world order which is the image of the beast the cashless digital society which involves you surgically getting a mark, all right? Will you bow down to this man's system or will you make the right choice as an Israelite in the faith and say, no, my God is Yahweh, my Messiah is Yahweh Shai. 
All right. So we all going to have to make that choice. Now, the correct choice is to what? Deny the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant. All right. Pursuing the revelation of 14th chapter, because the people that take the chip, the microchip implant, when it's made mandatory, you're going to be destroyed. And especially here in America, you're going to be a part of that lake that burning for fire and brimstone, which is the whole landmass of America hit by nuclear missiles and engulfed in flames. All right. So this is how they're going to bring about the hour of temptation. So it's very important. You know, you pay attention to this um, AI technology, you know, this man's pseudoscience and pay attention to the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, because that's going to play a crucial role in in the um, mark being made mandatory. All right. Remember, the currency is going to be on the mark. Let's read that again. Revelation 13 to 17 is that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right. So once again, the currency, which is programmable digital money, is going to be on the mark when it's made mandatory. This is why you cannot buy or sell. Lease you completely deny Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. I'm talking to you Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. You Israelites that scattered to the four corners of the earth. Deny this chip. Because our God is who? Yahweh and his only begotten son. We're supposed to worship Yahweh Shah as well. The Messiah. So if you take this chip, you completely deny Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right? Just so that you can buy and sell and conduct business in this man's new world order system. All right? So now, let's go to the actual um, lesson. All right? So that's how they're going to bring about the hour of temptation. They're going to cause a global economic collapse in order to usher in a new system. So, you know, everything concerning the formation of the BRICS nations, this de-dollarization movement, you know, America, you know, the U.S. dollar possibly losing its world reserve currency status. Yeah, that's major. All right. Yeah, that's going to affect us greatly in this society. But ultimately, this is the goal of the central bankers. Remember, the central bankers, the JEWSs, all right? These Edomites, the so-called white man in the line, they deal with playing both sides, all right? They the ones that control both sides, whether it be Democrat, Republican, you know, these different uh, wars, you know, they control both sides. And it's called the Hegelian dialect, also known as problem, reaction, solution, all right? These false flag attacks or real events, they use these events to come up with a solution that's going to further their agenda, their enterprise, their goals of world domination through their centralized system. All right. So this current system that we're under, which all countries are under, because you got people that say, oh, I want to leave America. You know, I want to go to Africa. I want to go here. I want to move over there. It's better. But you're still under the same centralized system. And this is how they're going to make the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant, mandatory throughout all countries because it deals with what? The centralized system. All right. So now let's go back. So don't bow down to this man's um, NWO agenda. Even if you got to be put to death pursuant to Revelation 24 for our religious beliefs, you know, being a martyr at that time, that's righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. All right. Because some of us, we're going to have to die with integrity. We're going to have to die with our faith. All right. And then we get how Bashar said, I will give thee a crown of life. I will give thee immortality. Right. We'll be one of the first spirits on the ships. You know, the so-called UFOs, the chariots of Israel, how the elect of the nation of Israel is going to receive salvation. It's going to take great faith and integrity to deny this man's system completely all right because this is the time period you know we're um stepping into you know all your assets your wealth your status everything you did up until this point when this chip is made mandatory all right is going to be used against you you know you all your degrees you know you you a ceo you got a good ass job you know your life you know your travels 
everything that you have, you know, the, the stock market. I mean, absolutely everything you did up until the point when they make this chip mandatory is going to be used against you. If you want to keep all of your assets and your progress in this world, all right, whether it be wealth, you know, tangible things, essential or non-essential things, is going to be used against you. And if you want to keep and hold on to your temporary life, pretty much, all right, which is centered around buying and selling, this man, the so-called white man, all right, the Edomites, they're going to persuade you or pressure you into taking this mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant, all right? But we're supposed to have the mindset that this is a temporary kingdom, which makes no sense knowing that this place eventually is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. And I'm talking about America, which is Babylon the Great. So why would you be an agent? Why would you be an agent provocateur? Why would you be a spy? Why would you take bribes? Why would you make covenants with the heathen in the form of the 501c3 charter, being a part of secret society groups, sororities, fraternities? That's absolutely stupid. Knowing the future of this place, that it's going to become a lake of fire, that it's going to be hit by nuclear missiles. You know, why would you take the mark of the beast, which is the RFID chip implant, knowing that if you take it down the line, you're going to be destroyed. All right. So it makes absolutely no sense really to, to build here at all. All right. The scriptures tell you what in Second Peter, the third chapter, that all the elements is going to melt with fervent heat. Your house. All right. Your land, your damn pets, your, your car, every damn thing. Everything that everybody owns is going to be burnt up here. Even, even when we receive salvation, these earthly mortal bodies that we're in, they're not going to be on the, on the ships. All right? These bodies is going to be down here. Our spirits is receiving salvation to be put in those new extraterrestrial spiritual bodies. All right? So absolutely everything in this society is temporal. Everything in this life is temporal. The only thing that's permanent is you being a part of the elect and the gift of faith and what Yahabashai promised us, which is immortality and salvation if we believe on him. All right. So you got to understand what you're a part of. You come into this truth, you're going to suffer. You got to suffer wrongfully at times. Right. You're going to go through different sickness, uh, sicknesses, infirmities, you know, um, probably was with women that you really love. At one point, and then the Most High just, he just used Satan to put a reprobate spirit on these women. All right. These are things that, you know, obviously I had to deal with, but even brothers before me that's been in the truth longer. Every man of the Lord has their testimony of their trials and tribulations. And that's what Romans 15 to 4 is all about. All right. But we have hope knowing that being under these curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it's not a forever thing. It's a temporary thing until Yahabashah returns back. And Yahabashah is not going to return back until these final end time prophecies come to pass in the form of Jacob's trouble, in the form of persecution, all right? In the form of martial law, the FEMA camps, the hour of temptation, the mark of the beast being made mandatory throughout all countries because all countries is under that centralized system that's going to be tied to the mark. The mark is going to connect you to the system. That's what the fourth industrial revolution is about. Merging man and machine to the system through the mark. All right. And then after that, what's going to happen? Salvation and the destruction of Babylon the Great, which is America. So now this is Habakkuk chapter two and um, verse. I might as well start at one and then I'm going to segue into the NLT version. It says, um, and that's the subject. It says, God answers the prophet, right? It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. So each man that's a part of the church, no matter where you've been scattered, all right, you on the watchtower. It's your job. When you see a camp going off, you rebuke the hell out of them, all right? You, you correct them. Open rebuke is better than secret love because you have a lot of people that's like, that's like that. Oh, I don't want to step on his toes. I want to wait for his downfall. Then, you know, they, they talk shit and murmur, you know, and, and whisper. All right. You ain't supposed to be like that. You see your brother 
or an Israelite going off, you rebuke them. You don't come into the truth to be liked and, and love like that. All right. You come into the truth. Ultimately, you're going to have to suffer until your Habashah comes back, you know, in the form of trials and tribulations, you know, different tests and challenges that the Heavenly Father goes sing your way. But through your Habashah, you're going to be able to escape. You don't come into the truth, you know, to um, be liked. All right. As you can see, Great Millstone is known for being hated. You know, people love calling us bombs. All right. Y'all faith based Israelites. Oh, why we got to teach like y'all, you know, there's just a lot of um, hating going on. All right. But if we don't rebuke these camps pursuant to Ezekiel, the third chapter, then the heavenly father, he'll be mad at us and destroy us. So the point that I'm getting at is when you see a camp go off, you immediately got to do a video on it. All right. You see any form of current events that link up with um, Bible prophecy, you know, you do a video on it. And you let the precepts do the talking and you break it down. All right. You make it plain upon tables. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Because we speak through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, through the Holy Spirit. All right. To feed our people with wisdom, knowledge and understanding. To give our people the warning. To tell them what's going to happen now and in the future. And teach them about what happened in the past. Right. It says, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. It says, and the Lord answer me. And whenever you see the word Lord in caps, it's the word Yahweh. All right, Strong's H36 here. And when you see the word Jesus, right, it's Strong's G2424. And the Hebrew origin of that is um, Strong's H3091, which is Yahweh. All right, so whenever you see the word Jesus, it's really supposed to say Yahweh if it was written in the Hebrew. It says, um, and the Lord, right, Yahweh, answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. And who's going to run that read of it? The elect of the nation of Israel. We're running with the understanding. It says, for the vision, right, these prophecies, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So you have particular prophets in their older generation that have visions of the future. And they noted it and put it in a book. All right. Some prophecies, it was meant to happen back at that time, which now is secular history. Right. But then you had prophets in the older generation that have visions of the time period we are in now, which is the return of the Lord and these final end time prophecies. Right. So prophecies is meant to happen at its appointed time when the heavenly father is ready for it to happen. Right. It says, but at the end, and how do we know we're at the end? Because the Edomites are in rulership. We are in the revived Roman Empire. All right? The scriptures tell you what, Second Ezra 6 and 9 real quick. For Esau is the end of the world, meaning that at the end of this present age, going back to Daniel the second chapter, all right, the Edomites, they would be ruling. Who are the Edomites? The so-called white man and his sea line. They are the Edomites. This talk about the NWO. All right, this um, centralized system, the CBDCs and all that. This this is their agenda. All right, this was prophesied that they would do that. They would be ruling over Babylon the Great. Right. Let's jump back. So it says, um, going back to Second Ezra six and nine, it says, for Esau is the end of the world, meaning the the um the end of this present age. Going back to the Greek word eon. Right. So the Edomites, they would be the last heathen nation to rule before the Israelites come back into rulership. All right. They would be the last nation or the nation that's in rulership when Yehoshua returns back with Michael, the archangel and the angels. Right. It says, and then check this out. When Esau go down and Jacob, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American Indians, our sea line. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So when the Edomites go down, the Israelites is going to rule forever. All right. We're going to have an everlasting kingdom. Why? Because the people that's ruling in the everlasting kingdom are immortal. We're never going to sin. So we're never going to go into captivity. We're never going to die. All right. So now let's jump back to Habakkuk. Right. It says Habakkuk two and three for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and it's speaking. And not lie. It's speaking. 
all right? It's very clear that the mark of the beast is the RFID chip implant. It's not even enough for discussion no more. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. You got to wait for these prophecies to come to pass. When you come into this truth, all right, you got to understand you have to be patient and wait for these prophecies to come to pass. The Lord said he's coming like a thief in the night. So you got to wait for the Lord. All right, you got to wait for these end time prophecies to come to pass in the form of current events. You got to be patient. All right. Us being patient is going to pay off in the long run. It says, um, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now that's NLT. It. This is um, Habakkuk chapter 2. And um, I'll start that one again. NLT version. I will climb up to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to the others. So when you're teaching this gospel, the correct doctrine, you got to teach it correctly. You got to sing the new song correctly. All right. And what do you learn how to sing the song from the apostles of Great Millstone? All right. GMS. Right. You learn from the apostles, bishop, elders, on down to the young brothers like myself from Great Millstone, right? And then you learn from us, and now you're running with this truth. So it says, then, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to the others. And who are the others? The elect of the nation of Israel. It says, this vision is for a future time. Because when John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos, which was one of three islands that the Romans, they would send prisoners to, right? He had visions about the future, about World War III, you know, the return of the Lord, war in heaven, right? The destruction of um, Babylon the Great, the hour of temptation, the mark of the beast become a mandatory, you know, old secular history concerning the beast, right? So all this was in the book. Now, concerning the mark of the beast, it was a future prophecy that's meant to happen in this lifetime. And you could clearly see the setup of how they're going to bring this chip about, how they're going to make it mandatory. It says it describes the end and it will be fulfilled whether people want to believe it or not. You know, whether they want to mock us or not, these prophecies are speaking very loudly, right? It says if it seems slow and come and wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed and it's not going to be delayed. Any day now could be a black swan event. All right. Any day now, there could be a major cyber attack on the banking system. Now, there's reports about, um, you know, they recently took down some plane or something like that. Right. They like quarantine like 150 people. They could use a disease outbreak as well to make mandatory the chip as well. All right. You're going to know it's the mark of the beast when that device, the RFID chip implant, is made mandatory where you can't buy and sell. That's a dead giveaway, right? NLT version, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, so that Satan will not outsmart us, all right? Now, the Satan is referring to is a Satan-like men that control the planet Earth, which is who? The Edomites, all right? 2 Nezra 6 and 9. The JEWSs, the central bankers, the Rockefellers on down so it says so that Satan will not outsmart us he can't outsmart us because through Yahweh we have the Holy Spirit and the gift of faith so we can't be deceived like how the scriptures tell you Matthew the 24th chapter it's not possible to deceive the very elect right it says um so that Satan will not outsmart us so the Edomites they are what Satan's physical counterpart on the planet earth they are the wicked it says, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Yeah, we're familiar with his different agendas. Georgia Godstone's 2030 agenda, you know, um, Agenda 21, Vision 2050. They have a lot of different agendas, all right? But it's all in the Bible. And it's all classified as what? The NWO. So now let's go here. Good link up. This is um, 2 Thessalonians 2. In verse 9, it says, even him, referring to the Edomites, the so-called white man in the line, right? Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And these Edomites, they worship Satan. Why you think all, all these Edomites, they flash up the 666, all right? That's their number. That's in Revelation, the 13th chapter. 
See how accurate the scriptures is? It says 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, even him, the Edomites, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs of lying wonders. And what's them lying wonders? What's, what's them signs? His AI technology, his pseudoscience. He's pushing forth his AI technology as a thing of convenience, as it's a miracle. You know, he's painting it like it's beneficial, but that's the deception part, right? It says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, unbelieving Israelites, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. All right. So this truth is only meant for who? The elect of the nation of Israel. Only the elect of the nation of Israel will receive salvation by the way of the so-called UFOs through Yahweh. I'm going to end it with this, Revelation 19 and 20. Now you see the subject, the doom of the beast and the false prophet, right? Which the beast is on um, NATO and the EU. The false prophet is a Roman Catholic church. It says, and the beast was taken... And with him, the false prophet, the Roman Catholic Church, and out of the Roman Catholic Church, you have the different Christian denominations, and you got Islam, which are the two biggest religions in the planet Earth, that wooden stone, right? It says that wrought miracles, all right, through his pseudoscience and his AI technology, right? Pushing it forth as a thing of convenience, but that's how he's trying to deceive people, right? It says before him, with which he had deceived them so that's how he's trying to deceive people he's he's trying to gradually have people accept this nwo agenda you know accept the idea of cbdc's and ai technology and you know now we don't really need humans in the workforce we got robots you know just trust us and our way of doing things right this cashless digital society but he's trying to deceive them so that he has full control over the world population through his centralized system, through his AI technology, right? It says, which he deceived them, right? The ones that's not a part of the elect of the nation of Israel that had received the mark of the beast, which is what? The RFID chip implant, all right? Like, as you see on the screen. So it says, um, yep. And them that worship his image, his new world order in his lifetime, it says, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. All right? So that's that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen to you people. You people, especially you people here in America, you will be a part of that lake that burned for fire and brimstone because you're going to want to buy and sell. Your faith is going to be weak. All right? And you're going to end up taking this chip. Just like during the disease outbreak a few years back, you know, the C1 to the 9, you people crack under pressure. And a lot of you people, you know, y'all them hypocritical um, Christians acting like y'all got the biggest faith in the world. And y'all folded during this time. When this devil told y'all y'all couldn't enjoy um, things on your leisure time, you know, non-essential things, you couldn't travel. You couldn't go in buildings. You couldn't even go to work. At least you prove you was, um, you know, given that, that, um, that medicine, right? Y'all quickly folded under pressure. How much more during the hour of temptation? All right. So, I just wanted to do this um quick video for the day before I get my day started. Lord willing, you was edified through the Spirit. Shalom.